I had a sales session the other day and something that happened in it just made me think I have to share this message with other photographers. Somebody said, wow, your prices are a lot higher than I've ever paid before when it comes to photography. And I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And I asked them, where have they done photography before? When they responded, they responded with like places like resorts and different kinds of things like that. Understand. When you are pricing yourself, you are a small business that is all-encompassing and doing what you do inside of your studio. You have overhead, you have costs, you have insurance, you have taxes, you have all those different things that come along with being a business owner, right? Resorts, in this instance, don't compare to what you do. Resorts that have photographers and they hire out as a extra thing that they do when you're at the resort. It's just part of the whole package that they're adding on to what they've already paid for. So they can write off that cost in a sense, not like write off it in taxes, but if I pay X amount of dollars to go to the resorts, the resort already made its money. When you go do photos with their photographer, they're making a little extra so they can keep their prices super, super low. The best example I can give is JCPenney's. Nothing wrong with JCPenney's. They have a photography service. If people want to go there, then that's fine. They're economically lower. They probably don't have the most trained people. It's a, it's, they don't have the personalized service. You just show up, you do your thing. Products are not as high level as most studio photography people. But there's nothing wrong with it. That's for a certain kind of client, and that's fine. But understand how a place like JCPenney's works. JCPenney's is in a huge structure that they already own or they lease from somebody that they're already paying for. And they put their studio in this facility that they're already paying for. So the costs are already in the whole thing that they're doing with selling clothes and luggage and cookware and all the stuff that JCPenney's has, right? And they just happen to have photography services. Those photography services, similar to the resort, offer themselves, but they're already kind of paid for because everything's paid for in the in the studio, like in the uh, the store by what people are coming and buying and doing on a regular day-to-day -day basis. But think about it from JCPenney's standard or standpoint. Where, when you go to a JCPenney's, where is the photography services usually located? Every one that I've ever seen is usually located in the back. And it's located on the side of the store where you have to walk through the clothing section to get to it. It is a marketing tool. It is a way to get you to go through and go, oh, wait, I need to buy some outfits for my photography session that I'm about to walk into. And they make money off of you buying clothing. Then they make money off of you being buying your photos. So when people compare you, that, you don't need to throw it into their face of, wow, you're much more expensive than blah. Understand that your value and your worth is way different than somebody else's. The best example I can give is this. I can go buy my wife a purse at Walmart. It's a purse. In my mind as a man, I just like, it's a purse. It's made of leather-like material or whatever. And it's going to cost, let's say, $20, $30. I could go and get a similar purse and go to Louis Vuitton and spend three, four, five hundred. I've never priced a purse at Louis Vuitton, to be honest. I could spend a lot more at Louis Vuitton. That doesn't mean that the purse, like it, like you can't, as Louis Vuitton, you can't price your purse that way. You can't. People want to because they go to Louis Vuitton and there's a different level of service and a different level of, of quality and everything that comes with it. Same with you in photography. 
when you're a photographer, make sure that you're creating a high level of service that makes your brand and your worth valuable to whoever your clients are so that when they come and do a session with you, they are happy to give you their money because they had a great experience. They saw amazing photos of themselves and they were taken care of. And at the end of the day, they have these awesome prints from a lab that they can't even get stuff from. So make sure you're doing that so that they can't compare you to the cheap photographer. Cheap photographers do cheap photography because like a great person said this to me once, Bernie Griffiths, he said, people value themselves the way they are worth or for how they feel they are worth, right? And whatever their product is worth, right? So if you're a cheaper photographer, I would challenge you to step it up a little bit because in honesty, you don't help the business. You like actually hurt it. Now, if you're a starting out photographer, yes, you're cheap. You have to be cheaper because you're building a portfolio and all that stuff. But if you're not getting out of that rut of raising your prices and making a business and not just a hobby, if you're a $300 photographer and that's all you're getting paid, it's a hobby. I'm not going to lie. I hate to say it, but it's a hobby. Make sure you're pricing yourself that at the end of the day, you are happy with what you're making and happy with what you're going to give your client at the same time. So I hope that helps you and hopes that gives you some encouragement. Value yourself where you want to be valued and don't worry about everybody else. Don't look, don't worry about getting compared to anybody else or any other company because you are you and you know your business better than somebody else knows your business.